Hey crafters, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to make a fun round card with some of my favorite Lavinia stamps. Hope you enjoy! So for this technique, you will need some sort of ink blending mat. And I'm going to put two colors of Distress Ink, picked raspberry on the top and wilted violet on the bottom. And then using my Brer tool, I'm just going to blend these together. Then I'm going to use some Perfect Pearls mixed with water and just spray this on top. You could always use water instead if you don't have Perfect Pearls, but the Perfect Pearls just gives that beautiful shine to the background, which shows up more in real life. So I'm just going to smoosh my paper into the ink, and then I'm going to dry this completely with my heat tool. And then I'm going to keep doing this and this time I'm going to push a little bit lighter so I get dots instead of a full background. And I'm just going to continue until I'm happy with the background. Now I wanted to make a circular card today, so I'm going to use two of my nesting dies. The biggest one is five inches and the smaller one is three and seven eighths. And this beautiful ombre glitter cardstock, which I got at Hobbycraft, I'm gonna fold this in half and this is going to be my card base and the glitter is going to be on the inside and I'm just going to line up my biggest circle die, the five inch one, so that one edge of the circle is over the fold there. And what I'm left with is a nice circular card with a join at the top. Now the smaller circle is going to go on the inside of the card and I'm also going to use the bigger die, the five inch die, on my cardstock that I created at the beginning of the video. So I'm just going to line this up to make sure that the die takes up the parts of the piece that I really like. And I'm going to save the other pieces for some smaller dies, maybe some letters. And then I'm going to take the smaller circle and just add some glue to it and put it on the inside of my card. And this is where I will write to my recipient. And I'll just put something heavy on this and leave it to dry. All right, now I'm going to start using my Lavinia stamps. Now this is the stamp called Raven, and I wanted the branch to be a different color from the fairy. So what I did is I held my ink pad on a bit of an angle there and tried my best just to ink up the branch with this brown Versafine ink. And then using my stamp cleaner, this is the uh, Lawn Fawn Stamp Chamois, I just wiped away any areas on the fairy that had been accidentally touched with brown ink. And then I stamped the branch. Now once this was on my front of my card, I cleaned this stamp thoroughly because I want the fairy to be a different color from the brown. So I'm going to use some Nocturne ink with the fairy. And I did the same thing, just held the ink pad on a slight angle and tried to just ink the fairy. Now some stamps will be easier than others to do this uh, partial stamping or selective stamping, but you will need something to wipe away the extra ink or you can always cover the stamp with a bit of a post-it note. I've done that in the past as well, but I find this a bit easier just using a stamp cleaner and wiping the ink away. Now, once I'm happy with the ink on the fairy, I'm just going to line up the stamp. And if you look at where the branches are on the stamp, it's a lot easier to do this, especially if you've got a nice clear acrylic block like this. And then once this is stamped, you'll see it looks almost as good as stamping with one ink. There's just a few areas that didn't stamp perfectly, but I will fix those with a black pen. Now, if you're using a stamp which might be difficult to line up, I would suggest doing this with a stamp positioner instead but I found with this tree branch, it was quite easy to see it through the clear acrylic block. Now this technique of ink smooshing is one of Tim Holtz's techniques, and I find it's a great way to liven things up on your cards a little bit. 
and it's good when you need a break from ink blending. Now that I'm happy with my fairy, I'm going to start adding branches around the outside of the circle. Now this stamp is called Tree Branch, and it works really well with Raven, as you can see. And it's also great for adding a scene to your card. And I like to use it to create a frame. So I'm using the same ink on all of the tree branches here, the acorn ink. And I'm just going around the sides and the top of the card just to create a bit of atmosphere on my card here. Now I'm going to add some berries. These are the mini berries. And I'm going to do these first with the darker purple, the monarch color. And this goes really well with the wilted violet on the background of the card. And once I'm happy with um, these berries, I'm going to add some more in a different color with a slightly pinky purple. This is called Purple Delight. And this goes really well with the picked raspberry on the back of the card. I just love these color combinations. Pinks and purples are always my favorite. Now to make this look more like a background, I'm going to add some more ink around the outside of the card, but I don't want to cover up all the, the beautiful background. In real life, this pink panel is quite glimmery and sparkly with because of that perfect pearls. So I don't want to cover up too much of it. I'm just going to use a little bit of Warm Breeze, which is a beautiful greeny blue color. And I'm going to concentrate the color on around the four o'clock to six o'clock area, if, if my panel were a clock there. So it's going to be light everywhere else, but darkest from you know, four to six o'clock. This will help to make it look more like a background in a sky. Then I'm going to rotate my circle and do the same thing, but with the monarch, the purple color. So I'm going to put it lightly around the whole card, but concentrate the ink on that four to six o'clock area. And like I said, I don't want to cover up too much of that pink because it is quite shiny and beautiful in real life. And then using my Nocturne, I'm going to add my sentiment, Once Upon a Dream. This is also from Lavinia Stamps. And I'm going to stamp it twice. Once it's in Nocturne, I'm going to use some of my gold ink. This is from Ulta New. And it doesn't matter if you stamp this perfectly on top of the Nocturne because it just gives it a nice a frame around the letters if it's off-centered. And you'll see here, it looks really nice, even if it's not perfectly lined up. So last thing I'm going to do is add some glitter to the front of the card here. I'm going to use some stickles on the fairy's wing. Now usually I use Nouveau Drops, but mine were running out, so I thought I would try the stickles by Ranger just to see how they compared. So I used the color called Unicorn on the fairy's wing. And on the fairy's hair, I used the color called Waterfall, just so that there would be a distinction between her hair and the wing. Now I found that these were very similar to Nouveau Drops. The only real difference is the size of the bottle and the price. So whichever is a better value for you, I would recommend. Now I also thought it would be good to add some tiny touches of that unicorn color around on some of the berries of the card. So I just chose a couple random berries and added a bit of the unicorn stickles to them. And then I put this aside to dry before attaching it to the card base. When you have stamps that are as beautiful as these, you don't need to add much on your background. So once that's completely dry, I'm going to take my card base, and I've already put double-sided tape on this, 
and I'm going to line up the circle on the front of the card base. This way I have my round card which does stand up and I have created another one here with a unicorn with the same color theme and I just wanted to show you that it will fit in a six inch envelope when you're mailing it and that inside circle is perfect for writing your sentiment. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this inspiring. Be sure to subscribe so that you're notified whenever I post a new video. Have a crafty day!